Hello everyone, my name is Chris Allen and I am a senior customer engineer on the Identity Ace team at Microsoft. Now that you've viewed part one of this series titled How to Open a Support Ticket for Microsoft Entry Permissions Management, it's time that we get to the meat of the subject. In part two, we will go over the steps, one at a time, on the two ways to open a support ticket. I know you're on the edge of your seats in anticipation, so let's get right to it, shall we? So as a reminder, um, before we open a case for anything, we need to make sure that we grab all the prerequisites. Uh, again, just as a quick glimpse, if you haven't watched part one, you might want to just to be sure that you have all this data. Um, but we want you to collect this information, the cell number, Azure tenant ID, subscription ID, account ID, project ID, controller status, entitlement status, data collector ID, screenshots, and hard traces. Again, they are all in, explanations of these are in part one of this of this series. Now moving on, how do we open a case? In reality, there's two places you can do it. You can do it under intro.microsoft.com and portal.azure.com. And the reason that we're showing you this is because in, unlike most of the um, Microsoft products at this time, you can't open it from within permissions management. So if you click on go to permissions management, you're actually going to go into the permissions management app, permissions management app, and there is no option for opening a case. So how do we do it? So under intro.microsoft.com, at the very bottom left-hand side, you're going to click on new support request. In there, you're going to look at under the problem description, it's going to say, what is your issue related to? You want to make sure that you choose Azure services. Then issue type will always be technical. And then if you have an Azure subscription, it'll show up in here. If you don't, don't worry about it. You don't have to have one. For the service type, you hit the drop down, and you are actually going to look for Microsoft Intro Permissions Management. Once you have that, the summary is going to be a brief summary of your issue. You'll put whatever, um, just a brief explanation in maybe one sentence of what your issue is, like uh, user management group did not create or something like that. Problem type, you're going to choose where your issue was. In this case, we're going to say user management. And then under problem subtype, we're going to say groups because this was a group issue that we were having in user management. Once we have all of that, we're going to click next. The first thing it's going to show you is a couple of recommended articles. Uh, if there are any articles that may be relevant to your particular case, I mean, you can read through these and see whether or not they are. And if they are, they may give you a workaround or a fix right off the bat and you won't have to open a case. If they don't apply, go ahead and click next. And here we want to make sure we specify under the problem details, when did the problem start? We want to make sure we get as close to the actual time of the issue. I'm going to say, let's say it happened at 3 p.m. If you know it, this helps us uh, track it better on the logging. But if you collected a hard trace, a lot of that data will be in the hard trace. So that's, that's another reason that you really want to collect that. For the description, this is where we're going to grab the data that we collected. And we're going to paste it in, in here. So if you we're putting everything in a notepad or somewhere, you should be able to just copy it and paste it in. So I've got my cell number, my tenant ID, my subscription ID, my controller status, entitlement status, and my data collector ID. Now we want to, um, to say what the actual issue is. And the way that we do this, and the best way to make sure that, that all, the answer, all the questions are answered, you need to answer four questions. Okay, what were you trying to do? How were you trying to do it? Um, what was the expected result? What was the actual result. Now, if you have error codes, anything along those lines, make sure you include those in here. You should also have those in your screenshots. Um, but if you answer those four questions and provide all that data there, then a huge amount of, of work has been eliminated and it, will, it, will, it should speed up any kind of resolution and also case assignment. Um, also make sure you include your hard trace and any screenshots by clicking on the file upload button which is right next to the file upload box where you select a file. Click that, and we're going to 
grab the hard trace that we created a couple days ago. It's fine. But you're going to grab the one you actually did. You wait for that gray bar to become green. And it should say up at the top that it is uploaded. Right now it's uploading. As soon as it has finished uploading, the bar will go green and you can move on. But you don't want to go until that happens. Right, there you go. It's turned green. Now we want to allow uh, advanced diagnostics information. This is actually up to you. Um, whenever uh, there, there is data that's, that we can access through some of our backend tooling, if you allow it, that just allows us to, to better correlate stuff. Um, sometimes some customers don't want to allow that, so they click no. And then if we need that information, then we have to come back to you and say, okay, can you provide this information? And they have to provide it at that point. If you just click yes, we're able to collect the data ourselves. Support plan. If you have a support plan, you should have options for A, B, or C. I have a developer support plan, which is not really a, a true support plan, so I get like C at the best. And C is a minimal impact case. It's got a longer SLA, basically. Um, so have A, set B. It will depend on the kind of issue that you're experiencing. Um, but we're, we're, ours has a sub C. So now you have to tell how do you want to be contacted. Um, most people choose email. Some people choose phone. That's fine. Whichever way you choose, that's how we will do our initial engagement with you. If you know you're not going to be around to receive a phone call, please choose email. Um, and if you are going to choose phone, make sure you provide a valid phone number. So we'll go with email. Um, my support language is in there. I'm going to put in the name. Ah, it does this. <laughs> if you cut and paste um, from that field, and this is really interesting, but if you cut and paste it from that field, anything you type will be backwards after that. And it's bizarre. But um, So what I'm going to do is type it somewhere else and then paste it in. So there we go. I put in your last name and then an, an email address that you want to receive this stuff. So it has to be a valid email address for you. Um, if you want to uh, be able to receive any correspondences, you absolutely need a valid email address. Um, anyone else that needs to receive these email correspondences and be a part of the communications between the case owner and the customer, you need to add them to the additional email for notification field. Then provide a valid phone number and your country code and our country region, country or region. So this um, will make sure that everything gets routed where it's supposed to go and in the right time zones and all that stuff. So once you've clicked that or gone through all that, you can click next. And if you save changes back there, it will actually make it where you don't have to repopulate some of that data the next time you open a case. All right, so you review everything, make sure that everything is, looks the way you want it to. If you see anything wrong with it, you can just click the previous box at the bottom left and go in and make your fixes and then come back to it. Um, there's also the terms and conditions and the privacy policy here. So it's a good, good place to find that if you wanna read through those. Then you're ready to click create. We're not gonna actually click create because I don't wanna actually create a case right now and have a, an engineer get assigned this and, and then it, the confusion that that will cause um, is not worth it. So I will just tell you that when you click create, it's gonna give you a case number and you'll be able to monitor that case from, when, from within the tooling. Um, you also uh, start receiving emails with that case number in the title and make sure that any emails you get from um, your engineer that you do any kind of replies as a reply all. And the reason for that is it has some uh, some email addresses in there for the, on the support side that allows your responses to go straight into the case, straight into the case notes, so there's never a loss of, of information between the, the discussion. So make sure that you're doing a reply all. All right, so that's how you do it in intro.microsoft.com. Let's go look at how you do it in the portal. So in the Azure portal, portal.azure.com, you have to do it through, we don't, you don't have to do it, but typically you should do it under Azure Active Directory. So you will click on Azure Active Directory, or you can go down here to what we call the hamburger, which is the three lines on the upper left-hand side. Scroll down to you find Azure Active Directory, click on it. Go to the very bottom left-hand side, and you should see new support request. Click on that. And from this point on, it's exactly the way it is in Intra. So you choose Azure Services, wait for the services to come up, 
Choose Microsoft Intra Permissions Management. Describe your issue. And select your problem type and your subtype. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is sometimes after you put in the problem subtype, if there's some kind of outage that's in the environment, um, usually you'll get a pop-up right down here at the bottom that says what the outage is. You can look at that and determine whether or not it's affecting your issue, and you may not have to open a case if that is the case. Otherwise, you just move on just like you did in Intro. The rest of it is exactly the same. That's it in a nutshell. I hope this training helps you to have the best possible experience in opening new support cases. My name is Chris Allen. Have a great day.